Hello again, ninth grade art history students. Um, this slide presentation, I'd like to do a little step backwards in time. We started looking at Roman architecture, but I think it's really important that you have a sense of what was there in that part of the world before the Roman Empire began. So we're going to look at Etruscan art, um, which was the Etruscan people lived a little bit to the north of Rome, what's um, now considered Tuscany and where Florence is the main city. And um, the artwork we're going to look at is from around about 650 to 500 BC. So it's like the ancient um, archaic Greek art that we looked at, the, the early Greek art, that same time period, but over on the Italian peninsula. Okay, slides coming. Okay, so here's a map to give you an idea of the region we're talking about. Um, Rome is here, although at this time Rome was not an important place. You can see the region that Rome is in is called Latium, the Latin part of uh, what will later become the center of the Roman Empire. And this is the, the area we're looking at. A little further north, it doesn't show you where Florence is right now. Cortona, you might recognize as a modern city. Volterra, you maybe you heard of that. Mantua, further north. But mainly in this area here, and some of the artwork we're looking at, there's a very important center here. Tarquini is in a very important center. Um, so this is the area where the most important or strongest culture was at this time, um, 500, 650, 500, 400 BC, you can see up here. At that time as well, the, um, Italy also had Greek settlements. Um, so this southern part of Italy was ruled by the Greeks at that time. I'm showing you this. You may recognize this sculpture, very famous, um, showing Romulus and Remus, these two boys, orphan boys that founded Rome. And as the story goes, they were uh, left in the wild and raised by a wolf. And this is a picture, a sculpture of that. Um, now the truth is that this wolf is a Etruscan sculpture from much earlier times, before Roman times. And later the Romans got this sculpture and then they added these two little figures to it. The two boys are added later to, in a way it's a little political maneuvering by the Romans to show their, um, their own history and their own evolution. But in fact, that was a, an ancient Etruscan sculpture. Here is one from the same time period. This is called a chimera or chimera. I mean, I'm not quite sure how you pronounce it. This is a Etruscan sculpture like the one we just saw in bronze. Um, you know, it's kind of life size. If you could imagine the size of a dog or a wolf. Um, likewise, the one we just looked at, that wolf was sort of life size. This is a fantastical um, creature, a mythological creature with a lion's head and a snake for a tail. And there's another creature over here, a bird with horns. So a kind of a mythological creature. But I would like you to notice that the, even though this is such an ancient sculpture, the Etruscans were very accomplished with sculpting and bronze casting. And so this is probably one of the largest um, uh, bronze sculptures cast at that time. So quite an achievement. This slide shows you a model, a reconstruction of what um, archaeologists and historians think a Etruscan temple would have looked like. Um, there's nothing remaining today like this, only ruins, um, but they have estimated this is what it looks like according to the foundations, the ruins of foundations they found, and also paintings that they've seen of temples. And I'm showing you this because I wanted you to recognize something of the proportions like we saw yesterday in the Pantheon. 
there's something different in the proportions from the Greek temples. And you can feel that, I think, when you look at this model of an ancient um, Etruscan temple. This is a picture of a Gorgon. So on that temple, they would have these terracotta um, figures on the eaves um, as a kind of protective device. So this is a very fierce looking Gorgon mythological creature. And here's another one. You can see a kind of a, uh, a fellow with a um, beard and a very pugnacious looking face called a Silenus. But it's a kind of a Bacchus type figure. And you see this kind of decoration above the head. Um, so we see some things like this way back in ancient Etruscan times that we can also see in Greek, ancient Greek times and then also in the Roman times. So it tells us that there was, there was something very ancient um, formed in Etruscan times by these people, which later on were picked up by other cultures, by the Romans. This shows you what it looks like today if you go to see the tombs. And like um, so many artworks we have, certainly like the artworks from Egypt, most of the artwork we can see was found from tombs. And when you go inside these burial chambers, you can see the walls are painted with fresco, all kind of scenes. And so that is when we see, we find so many of the artworks. And I'm going to show you a few of these, but just to see the whole room, and the decoration with these bands around here and the people doing different things, the patterns, the geometrical patterns of the ceiling. Here is a scene, this is called the Tomb of the Leopards because of these beautiful leopards here up on the upper part of the wall. Um, interesting tongues coming out. I, I guess they're supposed to be roaring at each other and the plants, like olive branches in between. Beautiful decorations on the ceiling. Square, checkered pattern and the circles. And then down here, the main scene of these people banqueting eating and drinking, feasting. It looks like they, they are the way they lay on their couch to eat is how we know the Romans also would lay to have their, um, have their meals and their celebrations. And these other people, they look like younger boys or servants um, serving these banqueters. I can't say what is the meaning of the difference between the light skin and the dark skin whether it's hard to tell whether these are women and they are then shown with a lighter skin or um, I'm just not sure what that means and historians don't know for sure what this light skin dark skin means we saw that if you remember all the way back in ancient Crete when we saw the figures leaping over the bull they also had that light skin and dark skin so it's some ancient way of portraying people This shows you the, the whole tomb wall with the paintings and uh, a place, a, more of a gathering place here with benches you can sit, and then the burials behind this wall in these uh, recessed uh, tombs in the back. And then you can see the different characters up here, a bull over here, a bull over here. Look up here, the beautiful sphinx with the wings. Can you see that? And on this side, a man riding a horse. And then I'll show you a, li a larger slide of this one. Yeah, here. You see a very beautiful and almost childlike drawings. If you look at the this drawing down here, it's the kind of drawing you see young children doing, the way they show these trees, very simple, um, naive style. It would be called as a palm tree here with fruit on it. And this is a man that I think this is a Etruscan man riding a horse. And over here we see a Greek figure. And I think they're about to um, have a battle. On top of this thing here, which looks like an altar, we see a couple of figures like um, sphinxes on top. Just enjoy the colors. This is very typical, this kind of red 
reddish brown and find this a lot in the Etruscan painting and this beautiful light blue. And then also look around and see some of these designs, this kind of shapes here with the dots and then this circle with a cross on top, circle with a cross on top. Beautiful plant forms. This fresco shows these two men. Well, I presume they are men, but again, I could be wrong. This may be a woman. This, her features are missing here. It's hard to tell. Perhaps they are more delicate, um, but certainly doing some interesting dance or ritual movements. This fellow is holding a, a jug, I presume, with wine. You get an impression of his curly hair and very strong legs. So I don't know if you remember from the early Greek sculptures how they had such strong uh, legs as well. This is more delicate image showing a musician playing a harp. Very beautiful colors, the pale blue. Very delicate, this one. And the beautiful way the trees are drawn so delicately and the birds and the trees. We saw this kind of pattern before somewhere. Where was that? Ancient Crete. Remember that pattern we saw? So it's always fascinating when you see these things um, crossing over from one place to another, from one culture to another. Look at this man's delicate, uh, very delicate sandals here, the way he's walking. These paintings, this figure is from a tomb and they call this the tomb of the augur. So they are people who predict the future. So the assumption is that this man is a, a prophet of some sort. Um, I'm interested in how large he is compared to this person who's very small. This looks like a kind of chair that they had, a folding chair, perhaps this man is carrying it to him. Very interesting hand gestures, how curled over, how large the hand is, and then how it's curled over here. This is a detail, a bull from one of those um, frescoes. And then we find some quite fascinating mythological creatures, some dragon kind of creature here. You can see the, the head. I actually, what is this called? A hippo something, hippocampus. And what is that? That's a part fish, part horse. Because this would have been the horse's head up here. And then look at these fantastic serpent, the serpent with three heads. A spectacular curling body and curling tail, and very fierce faces. And this is a lovely slide showing this kind of form drawing of waves. And then the dolphins leaping in. So they repeat the same thing over and over again so it becomes a pattern. But a beautiful, uh, beautiful combination of uh, spiral waveforms and the dolphins leaping into the waves. So be sure to sketch this one. This is such a beautiful um, little, it's only a, a detail, a decoration, but really very beautiful. Here's another detail of um, get an idea of their boats and their fishing. Dolphins leaping here, and the birds in the sky flying. So, you know, when we look at this, it's not as elegant, it's not as naturalistic if we compare it to the ancient Minoan people. If you remember their scenes of dolphins and birds, it's not as delicate as that. So this, it's a little bit more rustic, it's a bit more earthy. The artwork of the Etruscans has this earthy and strong um, character to it. And now when we go over to look at some of their sculptures, this is a sarcophagus. So that's a burial, it's a tomb, it's a, um, a, you know, a casket to put the dead person's body in. And the bottom part is made from stone, 
you can see it's made from a few pieces and the upper part the lid which is sculpted to represent these two people these this couple um, is in terracotta so the these the Etruscan people they did a lot of sculpture using a soft stone a kind of a soapstone or alabaster that they had in that area and they did a lot of their sculpture in terracotta and here they you see the combination the, the way that they lay down their legs laying down here is very similar to the way that they um, lay down to have their meals this traditional way that continues into Roman times of eating banqueting and then you can see so they've portrayed themselves in death as if they are at a banquet and the way that they have placed themselves together, this couple. Interesting to note, if you look now on this figure, you'll see that the woman is portrayed in this sculpture with lighter skin and the man with a darker skin. So maybe this gives us a clue, looking back at the other paintings, that the darker skinned um, characters are male and the lighter skinned are female. In any case, this sculpture shows them going into the afterlife, how they would like to, how they imagine going into the afterlife, as if they are at a banquet, banquet and this was their, their tomb. And it looks as though they've organized the hands. This is broken, but the hands as if something could be placed in there, perhaps flowers or holding a lamp here. Here is another example this time the whole thing is carved out of stone if you look the the man and the woman this the way they've um, arranged it with she's kind of sitting he's lying down a little bit i think as you look at all of the uh, etruscan art you see the figures are a little um, muscular more solid see this one he's holding something here he's holding in his hand a plate or a dish or a place to put a lamp and if you look down the stone was painted and you see one of their beautiful designs like we saw in the tomb before and then I'd like to show you a few um, bronze figures this is a small figure um, very elegant very beautiful the way that the, the cloth has been captured He's holding the cloth here. So even though it's a small figure, you just have the feeling from this, the smoothness of it, the way it's sculpted, it really, it captures something of these people. It's a very typical expression. A centaur. So we, you will have noticed that they, that these people absolutely had this um, history uh, legendary or mythological creatures and the centaur being one of those so we know about the centaur from Greek stories but was obviously also a part of the Etruscan um, stories and mythology this is a very uh, famous sculpture from these people it's called Apollo um, large large life-size terracotta figure so you can see it where the arms have broken off it's hollow inside so they make it like pottery that it can be fired it has to be hollow so very um, intricate and clever technically to be able to do such a large sculpture and fire it and you can get a little bit of an impression of their real life um, physique and their real life um, how they looked and also how they dressed from this sculpture this would be a good one for you to uh, draw to spend a little longer this is a very large and famous famous sculpture and 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 well preserved apart from the arms being damaged this one I also think is very beautiful um, terracotta piece again you see how it's hollow here of a young woman you get an idea of of her character her uprightness her her mood from her face it's a very um, lifelike portrait and the way she would dress her these medallions see each one has a figure on it 
her necklace and her clothing. So this one, these two that we just looked at, the Apollo and this woman, young woman, um, these are real masterpieces from this time period and really help us to see um, a bit deeper into these, these people. A couple of small things to finish, little, some of their pottery. This one, uh, a cup or chalice with these um, sphinx figures going around. And this last one, a pottery figure with lion heads. So there's something very um, powerful. I, I think throughout this artwork of these people, there's something very strong and powerful coming through. And we see it in the mythological creatures. We see it in these um, the animals that they portray so strongly. They're strong, the strong figures when they, when they portray a human body, they portray it as quite physically strong. And I'm just going to go backwards. That was the last slide. I just want to pop back this way. Um, to really encourage you to spend a little a bit longer with this one either draw this one if you if you like this one best or draw this figure of apollo if you like this one better um, these two as i said are really um, our windows in through the artwork of the people we get to know them a little bit better these people are really really very mysterious um, all we know about them really is from these these artifacts and from what the Romans picked up from them and continued. So that so many things that the Romans did, we think, originated with these Etruscan people. Um, go through the slides, make sketches, and then choose, especially some of the sketches with the, the paintings, um, of the tomb, the walls of the tombs, the frescoes, they're so beautiful. They're very simple, they're somehow uh, naive, childlike, but also beautiful. Um, capture some of the colors there, beautiful colors. And then spend a bit longer, choose either that Apollo or that uh, young woman to spend longer and do a larger drawing on. Okay, thank you.